Uh, greetings, everybody. It is I, Mad Game of the Second, here to present some Mad Good Gear. Today, I'll be going over the heavy Hydra and Ballpoint Splatlings. But before I begin, I had a bit of a conundrum in regards to the Ballpoint Splatling. The heavy and Hydra Splatling, OGs from Splatoon 1, share many similarities in their playstyle and mechanics. In fact, you will find that many of the builds between these two weapons are near identical. The ballpoint, on the other hand, is much more unique, with builds more akin to the mini splatling. That being said, I ended up deciding to cover all three of these weapons as they tend to fill the role of an anchor, pressuring opponents from a distance and supporting their team from the back line. Thus, without further ado, first up we have the heavy splatling. The poster child of splatlings and my personal favorite, this lovely Gatling gun has a nice balance of shot range, firing speed, and weight. Its main weakness is its damage, or lack thereof, requiring at least 4 hits to splat an opponent. The base kit, also known as the Vanilla or V-Heavy, comes equipped with a sprinkler for its sub-weapon and wavebreaker for its special. Though one of the first weapons unlocked in the game, in the hands of a master it can be quite deadly. Okay, okay, enough with the introduction. Let's get into the nitty gritty of what makes this weapon tick. A key thing to remember as a splatling user, run speed is your best friend. The charging mechanic of splatlings requires you to be out of ink for extended periods of time, both to fire and to charge your shots. Run speed up will not only allow you to peek from cover more quickly and easily, it will also help you engage opponents on open ground. Your typical heavy build comes equipped with three mains of run speed. This will maximize your run mobility while leaving room for other useful abilities. The most useful of which is ink resistance. Due to the time it takes to charge and fire your shots, one cannot simply paint their own feet. Thus, being able to withstand enemy ink while in a firefight becomes quite crucial. In fact, my personal preference is to run a whole main of ink res alongside two mains of run speed. Between opposing weapons with longer range and my more aggro playstyle, the extra ink res helps me stay alive and kicking. Although run speed up will be your primary movement perk, the heavy splatling also benefits from abilities such as swim speed and quick super jump. A couple subs of swim speed up will enable you to reposition more easily as well as keep up with the lighter weapons on your team. Likewise, even a single sub of quick super jump will allow you to enter and exit the battlefield more quickly. The final item on our list of splatling essentials is intensify action. One of the newest abilities to Splatoon, Intensify Action comes with three useful perks. First, it helps you maintain your momentum while conducting a squid roll, and thus perform more squid rolls in a row. Second, it decreases the amount of time required to charge your squid surge. Finally, and most importantly, it mitigates the spread effect of your shots while you jump. Jumping is one of the few movement options available to Splatlings while firing. It makes you harder to hit and can give you a little extra boost to your range. The ability to increase your accuracy while doing so is a huge improvement. I'd say the sweet spot for most splatlings would be around 2-3 to three subs. Now so far, the focus of our builds has been to improve the movement of the heavy splatling. The beautiful thing about gear building is there's never one right answer. For example, Wavebreaker gets a lot of value out of special charge up and special power up, with special power up increasing the radius of its rings. Or you could equip object shredder to combat the multitude of subs and specials getting thrown at you. The key is choosing abilities that fit your playstyle and can help you play your best with the weapon. Next is the Hydra Splatling! Big brother to the heavy splatling, this heavyweight beast has an incredibly long charging and firing duration. Normally dealing only slightly more damage than its smaller counterpart, when it becomes fully charged, the Hydra activates a damage boost, able to splat opponents with only 3 hits. The vanilla or base kit is equipped with an autobomb sub and a booyah bomb special. Slow moving and quite the ink guzzler, the Hydra Splatling is feared for its range and firepower. But for real though, this weapon has one of the longest ranges in the game, second only to the E-Leader. Because the main weapon is so fearsome on its own, the majority of builds focus on counterbalancing its lack of mobility. In fact, as I've mentioned before, due to its similarities with the Heavy Splatling, you can run pretty much the exact same kit. I myself would adjust some of the subs, replacing sub resistance with either swim speed or intensify action. As sub resistance, formerly known as bomb defense, no longer protects against specials, it isn't quite as essential. And of course, as the Hydra chugs ink like nobody's business, last ditch effort is another viable option, especially for modes such as zones. And finally is the ballpoint splatling. A newer addition to the Splatoon series, the ballpoint has several unique features that can be difficult to master. 
The first quarter of its charge, or half of its first ring, fires a wide spread of ink at short range. Once it's charged beyond a quarter of the way, it switches to a long range firing mode, rivaling that of the Hydra. During this second mode, the weapon possesses perfect accuracy, but also a slower fire rate and lower mobility. Additionally, the ball point is able to begin charging its next shot before it has finished firing. In this way, it can cancel its output without losing its charge and continually fire in its long range mode. The base kit is equipped with the Fizzy Bomb Sub and Inkjet Special. As one of the most versatile anchor weapons, it has become quite popular among Splatling mains. Now combining the weapon's naturally high mobility with the aggressive nature of its base kit allows for more flexibility when equipping abilities. Though the ballpoint is slowed down quite a bit in its long range mode, in its short range mode it can run and strafe nearly as quickly as the mini Splatling. Thus you won't need to equip as much run speed as you would a Heavy or Hydra. The bare minimum you'll want is two mains. From there you can add on a couple more subs as suits your needs. As with my heavy and hydra builds, I myself like to run a couple of subs of swim speed to help when I'm repositioning around the map. And of course we have our usual assortment of utility subs. Ink res, quick super jump, intensify action, etc. But the two key abilities you'll want to consider is object shredder and last ditch effort. LDE is universally viable for any sort of kit that comes with a bomb based sub and being able to continually fire without completely breaking off your charge can leave you with an empty ink tank if you're not careful. But if you're able to get the hang of this weapon's ink efficiency, I would highly recommend Object Shredder. Arguably beneficial to all splatlings, the ballpoint is one of the few with specs to spare an ability slot. On top of the weapon's innately high mobility, Object Shredder can help make up for its slower fire rate during its long range mode. However, the main reason this ability works so well with the vanilla kit is the fact that the damage multiplier to objects is applied to sub and special damage as well. With the amount of walls, weight breakers, and crafts in our current meta, Object Shredder allows the ball points Fizzy Bomb and Inkjet to be much more effective. There you have it, folks! That is all of my knowledge for builds of the heavy Hydra and ball point splatlings. I do hope you found it insightful. If there is anything I may have missed, or you have suggestions for weapons I should cover next, feel free to let me know in the comments below. I know this video has been a long time coming from when I said I was set out to make this, and honestly I did not expect it to take as long as it did. This has been a completely new process for me, intentionally sitting down to record, edit, and then make the video. There was just a lot of kinks to work out, and as it's been a passion project of mine, I wanted to give it the highest quality possible. Through it, I've been able to work out a system, and so hopefully the next one won't take nearly as long. But until then, I would very much like to thank you all for hanging out, and thank you all for watching. As always, this has been iMadGamer the second, and I will see you all later.